Inspector, I got your memo. Um, I am the uh, mayor of the city of Hope. And uh, without sincerity, I, I want to tell you that I don't know exactly what point you're trying to make. That's why I invited you here, so that we can shed some light on the matter. Please, sir, the young man in question is being detained by your orders. Now, I'm of the opinion that we detaining him indefinitely is not justified, sir. Um, what reasons do you have for coming to this conclusion? One, his offense merits bail, and he's being denied. Secondly, I've spoken to a number of people with regards to his mother's behavior and majority of them think that she is a very wicked woman. Therefore, his allegations could be true. Do you understand what wickedness means? Inspector, do you understand? You sit here before the mayor of the city of Hope and accuse someone of being wicked? Sir, we are keeping the young man because he threatened to kill his mother. Ah, so you want us to release him again so he can go and, and kill his mother? He did make a statement that he will not kill his mother, sir. And we keeping him in detention, in custody, is not right, sir. Inspector, I want you to listen to me. Because I have no intention of repeating myself. Leave that young man in detention. I am not convinced that if released, he will not kill his mother. I don't you haven't said anything about the outcome of a meeting with the mayor. What did he say to you and where exactly are we going to? We're going somewhere to just sit down and plan, map out things. Plan? I don't understand. What are we planning? Yakub, there are lots of things happening and uh, we just need to figure out how to get it done. I have handle lots of cases and so have you. I've won lots of awards. Believe me, I know what I'm doing. I, I will deliver. Well, I, you know I trust your judgment. Just that I thought you should give me a clear clue as to what you were up to. You know? My brother, relax. Relax. For once. Relax. Okay. I'm relaxed. Inspector Ferdinand has just left this office. He said the new statement has been extracted from the young man who threatened to kill his mother. I want that confession. Sir, I am not aware of any statement yet. It is possible Inspector Ferdinand has now filed in the statement, sir. Then go back to the office and ask the others. I must, and I repeat, I must have that confession. Not yet. When I decided to join the police force, I made up my mind that whatever the case, I will make sure I do it to the best of my ability. Is that why you brought me to this lonely path? Of course, we all know you're a good cop, and so what? Yakubu, I know you are very good officer and you are observant and I'm sure that you have observed some of the wrong things that have been happening in our department wrong things things like what Madam Magdalene alleged that her son Anthony her stepson threatened to kill her I arrested the young man I quizzed him and he said he was frustrated that's how come he made that statement he later on revoked it, but we are still detaining this young man. Why is he still in detention is my question. Well, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as I know, uh, the young man in question, the suspect, is in your custody and you don't need to know what I think before you do what you should do. I think that politicians have hijacked the operations of the police in this city. I don't get it. Okay. I went to see the area commander concerning this matter. Now he said I should go and meet with the mayor. 
for what? Uh, I know that already. I know you've been to see the mayor, but you're yet to tell me the outcome of your meeting with him. The mayor ordered me to keep the young man behind bars. And I don't understand how legal that is. You know, as law enforcement officers, we are trained to obey orders. If the mayor ordered that you keep the man behind bars, Obey the last order. Period. Yakubo, are you telling me that even if the last order is not right, as per your conscience, you will obey it? Ferdinand, honestly, I consider this whole thing a waste of time. I mean, is this the reason why we, you know, drove all the way to this place to talk about some cock and bull stuff? I think you should just take me back to the office. Anthony, how are you today? <coughs> you feel better? As you can see, I'm uh, just there. Listen, um, I need you to understand that uh, getting you out of the cell it's something my superiors are against. But uh, I'm a very responsible officer. And I think you being in the cell is not legal. That is how come I got you out. I understood yesterday you made a statement that you were very frustrated. And that is how come you actually made that particular threat statement. I want to understand what your frustrations were. Officer, a very cold war existed between her and my late father. Though outsiders didn't know about it, but it was hot. It was intense. And I have every reason to believe that she killed my father. You just repeated what you told me yesterday. Nothing new. Why would you say she killed him? My father died in an accident while he was in the same car with her. In an accident. But I can say without fear of contradiction that she masterminded that accident. Anthony, you're making a very serious allegation. Can you prove that? Well, officer, if given the opportunity, I will try my best. I was made to understand that my father, my father died on the spot. And Madame Magdalene and the driver were rushed to a hospital. Now, from what I was told, the driver had little injuries, but he was fine. He was fine, just minor injuries. But he died. So, what can you make of that? No. The nurse that attended to them when they were brought in, she came in the morning and she was shocked. She was shocked that the man had died. Because from her professional assessment, the man had no reason to die. He was fine. He, was, he, he wasn't in any danger, though he had bruises, but they, they were just minor things. Right? He was fine. But he died. Anthony, um, whatever you're saying has, has no death. You were just making general statements as far as my knowledge is concerned. Officer, please, I beg you. I wish you know how I feel right now. I beg you to please believe me and trust me. Madame Magdalene was in the hospital for two weeks. And while she was there, she never contacted anybody. She didn't call me because she had a plan. She knew what, what she was doing. She had a plan and she was in the hospital with money. Now, while she was there, she changed the family lawyer and got some, 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 some dude somewhere. She changed the family lawyer. And then she started changing my father's properties to her name. Everything that belonged to my father, she changed to her name. It was after she was done with her fraud. That was when she called me. 
and told me that he told me that my father had died in an accident. Anthony, I will need you to look me directly in the eye and tell me that it's exactly what happened. confronted her and asked her why. Why she didn't call me. She told me she was in a coma for two weeks. That was what she said. And then I asked a nurse that was in the same hospital and she told me that Madame Magdalene was fine. She was full of life. She was healthy. She was fine. There was nothing wrong with her. She was never in a coma. She was healthy. Now, if... I want to ask you, officer, if that witch was really in a coma, would she be able to do the thing she did while she was in the hospital? I mean, changing, changing the, the, the family lawyer, changing all my father's properties to her name, would she be able to do that while in a coma? Did you confront her? Officer, that was the most, that was the climax of my frustration. That, that was why I made that statement. I confronted her, officer. You know what she told me? What did she say? She told me that her husband and her, that they were one. That everything that belongs to my father now belongs to her. Everything my father labored for now belongs to her. That I should go and look for my own property. Officer, we are talking about things that my father acquired even before he married her. Things that are supposed to be my officer. Now tell me, just be sincere to me. If you had a stepmother and she told you this sort of nonsense, officer, what would you do? Tell me, what would you do? Anthony, it's okay. Anthony, relax. We have a pattern of being police job in this country. And I suggest you stick to that pattern. What do you mean there's a pattern in this country and I should stick to that pattern? Tell me, why do you keep giving some preferential treatment to that young man? A man who threatened to kill his mother should be kept long under custody to weaken his spirit. You let him loose and he will go ahead and carry out his threat. Yakubu, that young man told me in confidence that he was frustrated and that is why he made the statement. He has revoked the statement though. And I want you to read my lips. I believe him. You want to tell me why you believe him so much? I have been doing this job for a very long time and I've always relied on my instincts. I've solved lots of cases based on my instincts. And this job, this case, my instinct tells me to believe him. So I believe him. And that is why I'm taking him home for proper questioning. <laughs> you see what I mean? You've lost it completely. Tell me, why do you keep breaking protocols for crying out loud? Why? Yakobo, I trust you. That is why I confide in you. And if you betray me, your conscience will pinch you till you die. Ferdinand, you are bringing unnecessary sentiments into this whole matter. And that's unprofessional. You know I don't play sentiments in my line of duty. I know I can get more facts from the suspect when I take him home. When he's relaxed. That is why I'm taking him home. Then bring him into your office and interrogate him like you've always done. Why take him out of the station for crying out loud? Because I want to open a full investigation in that accident. It's possible his allegations are true. It's very possible that the accident was masterminded. I will take the suspect home and get further answers. That is what we do in the police service. It's not over until it's over, until you've checked every avenue. That is the standard, and that is what I will apply. Things are falling so far. is beginning to question the continued uh, retention of yours, of your son. Why is he questioning who is in the first place? The son has made a new statement, accepting that your life is in his hands. So, and the police officer says that uh, according to the provisions of the Police Act, the boy should be released since he has not committed the murder. I am surprised you're saying this. How dare you? What do you think about releasing a young man who is ready to kill me? Magdalene, 
I honestly wonder if you realize that the young man we're talking about calls your mother. Oh! Shut up. I am not his mother. How I wish you would have a son who would want you dead. Then we talk about motherhood. Look, if we keep that boy one minute longer than necessary, it will tantamount to violation of the police act and a breach of his fundamental rights. Look, the policeman, the officer, he knows that the boy is being kept on my orders. Mm -hmm. He can tell the press. And that is one thing I don't want. I am a politician. And the last thing I want is for the press to beam their such light at my end. I understand. I'll give you my money. Mm. So that you can give to that overzealous officer. I want Anthony to remain in detention. You can do it. And that is what I'm asking you to do for me. Do it. Magdalene. Most times I wonder if you remember that I am the mayor of the city of Hope. Yeah. What we're talking about borders on uh, credibility and has absolutely nothing to do with money and it will never degenerate to that level I understand you don't, you don't understand I do <laughs> I am surprised with this visit from police detectives. I mean, I am a law abiding citizen. Officers, where did I go wrong? We never said you went wrong anywhere. We came here to ask you to explain to us what you know about Madame Magdalene. Needless to remind you that we know you very well and that's why we came here. Don't tell us lies. What do you know about Madame Magdalene? Hey. Madame Magdalene, that woman is evil. In fact, if there is any word that is stronger than evil, it should be used to qualify her. She came from the pit of hell. And she should be regarded as an apostle of the devil. In all fairness, don't you think it is wrong of you to qualify a human being with all those things you just said now? She ruined the life of my friend. And when the old man wanted to pick up the broken pieces of his ruined life, she set him up in an accident and killed him. Mr. Daniel, I know that you are very much aware you're in the midst of two officers and that whatever you say here and now must be the truth otherwise we will hold it against you someday officers i know what i'm talking about a high chief was forced to give out his two daughters in fact his only two daughters to two russians who couldn't even speak english <laughs> he was taught to a vegetable and that was the beginning of his sorrow if he now wants to discuss with his in-laws he needs a translator there was no more confidentiality in in-law to in-law discussion and the man complained bitterly until he died i put it to you as i'm looking at you now that you don't even know what you're saying officers i know what i'm talking about how could you say you know you said the man was killed in a set accident then again you turned and said the man died how do you reconcile the two statements you see the high chief was taken by his wife to attend the graduation ceremony of the daughter of one of her numerous friends. And, and this, this graduation ceremony we are talking about is graduation ceremony from the nursery school. That was the reason she took the old man to Enugu and the man never came back from that journey. Mr. Daniel, I'm interested in how you came about this information. Me, the man was my friend. He told me everything. In fact, at this stage, he had to tell me that his, his instinct was telling him that his life was in danger. There was nothing we could do until the man died. Well, I guess uh, we've had enough information. Uh, Mr. Daniel, we appreciate it very much. No, no, you see, officers, any, anywhere you want me to come and say this thing, even in the law court, I'll come and tell you everything I know about it. I'm willing, very ready. Okay, let's go. We will call on you someday okay. if we ever need anything else. Thank you. You're welcome. You're Thank welcome. you very much. You're welcome. Sir. You're welcome.
Barrister F. Young. I had to see judicial officers that participate in perversion of justice. We came here this evening to dialogue with you because we know there is something you know that we need. I don't know why you are leaving us with just one option and that is for us to dig up the truth on our own. And that is exactly what we are going to do and needless to remind you that we have the capacity to always dig up the truth. I've told you guys all I know and that is it. Barrister Ethiopian, you were able to obtain the letters of administration for yourself and that of Madame Magdalene. Now did you forget or did you not know that the late chief had a son? I followed the instructions of my client and that's what I'm trying to do. Now, Barrister F. Young, you obtained that document, letters of administration in a record two weeks. Now tell me, how were you able to perform that magic, Barrister F. Young? <laughs> you guys are talking as if you don't know I'm a lawyer. I did just that because I'm a lawyer. How did you present yourself to the probate officer? Did you say you were the son, a friend, a brother, relative, bed sharer, or what? I mean, this is becoming somewhat suffocating. I mean, insulting. I won't have you guys insult me in my office. You know what? We came here hoping that as a judicial officer, that you will be open to communicate with law enforcement agents. But listening to you, watching how you carry yourself, judging your comportment, I have every reason to believe that you belong to a different school of thought entirely and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I followed the instructions of my client and that's it. Well, just know that those who twist the judicial processes will be burnt because we are coming after you. You can as well shoot up with your eyeballs. Shoot them out. But it's dead. Very serious problem, and that's why I'm worried. <laughs> There's no problem I cannot solve. Let me hear it. Madam, you are playing with the issue under discussion, and I'm not quite comfortable with that. What is the problem? Two very intelligent officers are investigating everything. They know what happened. And what are the names of the officers? One called himself Ferdinand, and the other one introduced himself to me as Mr. Girl. Both of them are inspectors of police. Did they tell you precisely what they're investigating? They asked questions on the accident, and the hospital, and the, the letter of administration. But at a point, I became confused. How did they get to know you? I don't know. They were just talking to me as if I'm a common criminal. I just don't understand. I understand you're still carrying on with that case, Ferdinand. Is that why you came to my office early this morning? What does that mean? Well, I actually came to talk some sense into your head because you don't seem to understand the implication of what you're doing. Look, Yakubu, you are an inspector like myself. And it doesn't really matter how long you've been on the job. What is important is how well you get the job done. 
as much as you're an inspector like me and you've been on the job for a longer period doesn't make you a better inspector than I am. Get that straight. Well, if you know this job as much as you claim you do, then you will understand that what you're doing right now is gross insubordination. The mayor is the chief security officer of this city. He has ordered that you stay away from the case, but you bluntly refused and keep carrying on as if though you are not under anybody's authority. I really wonder if that is what you were thought in the academy. It doesn't matter what I was thought in the academy. I have serious work to do. Get out of my office. Ferdinand, you know you cannot afford to join issues with the police authorities. I advise you check yourself before you wreck your career. Have a good day. Thanks for the advice, but no thank you. I don't need it. Get out. I am the chief security officer of the uh, City of Hope. Now tell me, is there uh, any section in the police code that empowers you to search anywhere without the permission of the area commander? There is no such section, sir. So, on whose orders did you uh, raid Barrister F. Young's office? We didn't go to raid his office, sir. We only went there to question him. Uh, on whose orders? Did you go there to question him? Because I have spoken to your area commander who says he gave you no such approval. With all due respect, sir, we are police inspectors. Confirmed police inspectors. Even newly admitted constables need no approval to go and question anybody, sir. So you are now going to teach me police work? With all due respect, sir, there was a mutual suspicion and we only went there to question him, to get certain things clarified. So, on what and what did you quiz him? Please sir, I think it's best that we present it as a report form to the area commander and then he will inform you accordingly. Uh, does this mean now that you are parting ways with your manners? I want an answer to my question. We are going to present every single answer in writing. That is police standard. And we are trying to follow that standard, sir. That's our nonsense, utter bunkum. I don't want anything in writing. Sit down. I want you to tell me everything that you discussed with the lawyer. Everything. Here. I can see that Mayor has a lot to hide. A lot to cover in this matter. And, uh, there's no way we are not going to give up. I'm seeing this thing differently. This is an opportunity for us to prove to superior governments that we can uncover crime in this city. The government is paying us so well to stamp out crime and we must stand up to that very responsibility. I agree with you. There is no turning back. You see, men who are commissioned to protect and prosecute the law must do only one honorable thing that is to settle down to protect and prosecute the law this is our business and we must be committed to that very business in this city the mayor or without the mayor i agree i will see you Man was a problem to Chief at home. He complained bitterly about her before his death. The allegation that she may be connected with his death might be valid after all when investigated. So you were asked to withdraw your services and you didn't ask why? Well, actually, she called me on phone. I, 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 I did not know she was calling from the hospital. She asked me how much they owed me, and I told her. The following day, I got a credit um, alert that the amount has been uh, deposited in my account. Thereafter, I got a letter informing me that my services were no longer required. That was all. But it's a Valentine. I'm sorry, but we find it very difficult 
to believe that you didn't suspect anything. Did, 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 did you make any effort whatsoever to get your job back? Well, actually, officers, I was already sick and tired of the job. She, she required me to come and seek approval and, 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 and explanations for every action I had to take. You know, but Chief was not like that. Chief would encourage you to use your discretion, make personal inputs and all that, you know. But, but, but she, she never trusted anybody. She was always suspicious of everybody. And <laughs> I, I couldn't work with her anymore. So when she, the letter came informing me that my services were no longer required, I, I, I simply accepted it. Tell us your impression about her. She is problematic. She is highly unpredictable. Very, very, very unreliable. You see, I would not recommend her to anybody. Sincerely. I wouldn't. How many years have you worked for this lady? Five, six years, there about. Okay. All right, uh, Barrister Valentine. Thank you so much for your time and your effort. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, officers. I'll do anything I can. I will offer any assistance to resolve this um, murder. You know, Chief, Atong was a role model, a big role model. And, and he, it's not right that he should just die like that. Officers, I swear, I didn't do anything. Huh? I have never assisted in vandalizing any car at all. Besides, I'm a good mechanic. Mechanic, slow down. Just calm down. Nobody's here to arrest you. And we never said you vandalized cars. We are undergoing an investigation and we want to ask you simple questions. Okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. No, I thought you meant to arrest me, but I hope there's no problem. Hey, hey, hey. You shut it. You were the very mechanic that serviced Shifatongo's car, is that correct? Mm, yes, officer. I service his car. But he's only one of them. He's two thirty Mercedes. Two thirty Mercedes. Chief Atongu died in that car. Are you aware of this? Uh, officer, now so I had. Uh, uh, but I was not the last mechanic that worked on that car. What do you mean? Uh, Chief Atongu was not the kind of man that played with his car. Uh, I knew him very well. In fact, he always settled for the best papers available. For nearly six years, I serviced that car. It was his driver that always brought that car here. But within that week, Chief Atongu died. Madame Mandarin drove that car into this mechanic village with some useless papers, eh? asking me bonny face to fix those useless papers for her. Eh? And I look at it, I refused. Why did you refuse? Officer, there are so many vital reasons why I refuse. One, those papers were so bad. Eh? And besides, I'm a man of integrity now. Nah? The, the chief at home I knew very well we never allow such parts to be used in his car. I was even willing to assist her get the original spare parts. But you know women and their selfish interests, she just suddenly got angry with me and drove out. Huh? Instead she took that car to my friend uh, at the other garage, uh, what him be named, uh, high center or low center, I, I, I can't remember again. Huh? And he agreed to fix those spare parts for her. The next thing I had was that the car lost control at the tow plaza and Chief died in the process. Okay, wait. Um, <clears throat> are you saying as a professional mechanic that it's possible that the bad spare parts could be linked to why the car lost control? Is that possible? Officers, I believe so. That the spare parts may have disappointed and the car went out of control. That is possible. Whatever you are saying is the truth. Nothing but the truth. Huh? I'm a good man. You can write it down. With all pleasure. You said that the parts on the car were of better quality than the ones that she brought. Now the question to you is this. Why did you then replace the good quality ones with the bad ones as a professional mechanic as you are? Officer. I told her, but she said she wants to keep the original spare parts in her house. It was strange, but I have no choice than to do it. 
So what happened to the original spare parts? Did she take them with her eventually? Yes, officers. Hassan, can you tell us precisely the exact things she changed in the car that day? Uh, she changed the two ups, the right side. That's by the owner, car owner's side. She changed the shock absorbers. Then she also changed the brake system completely. That's all, sir. Hyacinth, do you know her husband sat at that side of the car four days after you changed those parts? They had an accident and he died. Officers, I don't know this woman and the husband from Adams. I only did what she asked me to do to, to change the spare part for her and that's all. So it's all my fault, officers. I only changed the part for her. They should not implicate me here, please, officers. Okay, the investigation is still ongoing. If we need your service, we will come back. Inspector Yakubo, I have lots of things to cover and I will appreciate it very much if you go straight to the point. You don't tell me to go straight to the point because you know the point already, Inspector Ferdinand. Young officers in this command are becoming disobedient and that is because you are disobedient. I will give you the benefit of the doubt. I have lots of people to question. I have a long list of appointments. Please, what? do you want listen i want you to stop going out with mr gill he is a bad influence and if you keep going out with him your promotion is going to be affected i don't care about promotions i am not desperate for promotions i have a duty to do what is right and that is what i am doing if i should get a promotion i want it to come because of my hard work and my diligence because i deserve it i want it to come from above you see what I mean? Listen, man. Promotion cannot come from above for you because you are disobedient to the officers above. Drop the case they asked you to drop and wait for your promotion. Inspector Yakubo, when I meant above, I meant heaven. Not your officers that manipulate promotion. I will never please my conscience to satisfy your men. I will follow my heart. I will play my part of honor. So now, if you don't mind, I need to lock up my office. Our constitution in this mechanic village states that nobody reports any matter to the police without it being handled in this office. Why did you go to call police for high sense without reporting here first? I never call police for high sense or anybody for this matter at all. Eh? By the way, what have I done to deserve all this embarrassment? See, see, if you don't know, the police you sent to him took him to one corner and questioned him for almost 30 good minutes. Point of correction, eh? Mr. Salisu. They questioned me for one whole hour. Oh, oh, oh. I sent them. Yeah, they don't need to tell me that you sent them before I know that you sent them. What do you mean by that? <laughs> no sense. Sit down, sit down. No sit down, sense. Sit down. Uh, my friend, now you listen. The police in question here, they were even suspecting that it was Madame Mandaline that planned the accident that led to the death of her husband. They even came to me asking me if I was the last person that summoned the car. And I said no, it, that it was I sent. Yeah? That was all now and they left. Why was you send them to me without telling me? They didn't come to the way too now. Huh? So? Did you say they were asking questions on uh, Chief uh, Atom Muska? Exactly. In fact, they nearly killed me with their question. And that is why you want to kill me. But if uh, that is why you want to kill no me. No problem. And the I didn't bring the that me. was what you say? In that is why you want to kill me. Uh, but if you, you are an enemy. I know. You're one of the most educated mechanics we have around here. How will they be able to get their source? I don't know their source, so I don't know. But they are suspecting the woman that she planned the accident that killed her husband. How can they accuse her without evidence? From the way they are even questioning me. It's very clear they are trying to reopen the case. Mm. Reopen case? They are trying to reopen it. Uh, I said, how were they able to trace the mechanic? I don't know. Huh? But policemen are dangerous. They are very dangerous. If they are doing investigation, especially if they are very serious about it, they will do anything to any length that even you will be confused. I tire. I tire. I am a responsible nurse and a law abiding citizen of this country. I am telling you the truth I know about the matter. What about the driver? Um, do you think he was killed? or he died a natural death? I cannot say that, sir. But when I left him the preceding night, he was okay. I remember the doctor on duty wanted to discharge him. 
But the medical director said no. When I returned the next day, I was stunned to hear that he died in the night. At this point, when the doctor on duty wanted to release the driver and the medical director said no, where exactly was Madame Magdali? She was with the medical director in his office. Do you know that it was reported that Madame was in coma for two weeks? What? She was never in coma. She was very okay when they were rushed in. Actually, she spent the better part of the evening making lots and lots of telephone calls. She was okay. You said they were rushed in. Who rushed them in? I don't know their names, but they were two in number. Chief was already dead and uh, his driver had a slight wound on his right hand. The lady was very sound. Now let us assume there is a kind of miracle happening now. And those men that rushed them in appears right before you. Can you identify them? Can you recognize them? If I see them again, or maybe their pictures, I will be able to recognize them. Yes, I will. How about the medical director? What do you think? What's, what's your opinion? Is he professional enough? Hmm. To me, he qualifies more as a businessman because he doesn't follow the medical ethics at all. He doesn't. Okay, uh, madam, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. If we need you, we will give you a call or we will stop by. Enjoy your day. All right. Your office issued letters of administration on the estate of Chief Shideba to, to Madame Magdalene and uh, one barrister Effion. Now, Mr. Private Officer, we came here to ask you a very simple question. Are you telling us that you are ignorant of the fact that Chief Atuong had a son who is old enough to be an administrator in his father's estate? Before I was sent from the state capital, the officer that was here before me committed that blunder. I could never have done such a thing. But uh, have you gone through all the files to ensure that every requirement was met? Yes, I've gone through the files. There are more than 30 administrative procedures that must be followed before letters of administration are issued. But these were not followed. Could you please tell us these administrative procedures that ought to be followed, that weren't followed? First, the relationship that exists between the deceased and the applicant must be stated. This was not done. Then, a gazette must be published for anyone that is against the issuance of letters of administration to the applicant to petition with reasons. Then the public has one month to object. This was not followed because the letter of administration was issued 10 days after the first application. Now, how do we locate this probate officer that was here before you? He was fired for corrupt practices. And even right now, the Attorney General is trying to prosecute him for bringing the judiciary to such a serious Disrepute. I don't know his present address right now, but if I make inquiries, I think I might find it. Now, Mr. Probate Officer, can you lift your telephone and begin to make that inquiry immediately? I'll do that in my own time. Please. Mr. Addison, we are still waiting for you to tell us how you got the power to produce letters of administration within 10 days, something that takes as much as two months to acquire. You see, the application came in with urgency, and I treated it with urgency it deserves. I use my discretion as a then probate officer. I don't need to derive any power from anywhere, as I was the I have the authority myself. 
I said, can you just explain some of the processes you, you went through to make this possible? Well, uh, you see, all rules, whether official or private, uh, have exceptions. You see, the application came in with urgency. And uh, I, I used my, my power and my capacity as a probate officer to treat the matter uh, without uh, uh, the rules and bureaucracy. It is done everywhere like that. Mr. Allison, I put it to you that you went contrary to lay down administrative procedures that ought to be followed as concerning the issuance of letters of administration. You did it your way because Madam Magdalene bought you, bought your conscience. Is that correct, Mr. Allison? Oh, no. You are wrong, Mr. Officer. You are wrong. Uh, nobody has bought me. And nobody can buy me even. You see, uh, Mr. Allison, I, I'm interested in your work. When you left the service, you left at level 10, right? You are right, Mr. Officer. But why, why ask? No, because um, we, we took interest in your salary structure. How much was your salary as at the time you, were, you left the service? What has my salary to do with this? Eh? What has my salary to do with the, the matter under discussion? It would interest you to know that we found out that you have as much as 30 million naira worth of capital shares in ABC PLC. How did you come about such money? You know me as a retired civil servant, but I'm sure you don't know me as a businessman then. I was a businessman. I do some business. You were a businessman? Yes, of course. You can swear at my feet. Okay, okay. You shouldn't be playing with everything. Madam, I'm not playing now. Those people spent nothing less than three hours grinding those mechanics, seeking information from them. You assured me you have put the mayor and the police under your control. Why then are they going about asking questions? Do you know the names of the officers? I don't know. They were questioning my colleagues, not me. And did your colleagues tell them anything? That is one question I cannot answer because I was not there. But I must let you know that there's no way well-trained policemen will question mere mechanics for three hours and will not extract useful information from them. Mr. Keke, that is the reason you should go back and control your mechanics. They're under you. You must order them to shut their dirty mouths. Don't get me angry. I take or beg you don't make me verse at all. What do you mean by order my mechanics to shut their mouth? Did I tell you I know they went to the police? I'm telling you that the police came and they were questioning people heavily and you are asking me to tell my men to shut up. And that is more reason you must tell them to shut their mouths. Okay, okay. Remember I paid you good money to cover your side. You must not fail. I've been covering my end. You're supposed to cover yours, but you failed. You're supposed to have the police under your control. If I get any visit from the police again, from any of the zones, I'll kill you. <laughs> okay, okay. Threatening me, Madam Martelly. <laughs> I will teach him a lesson he will not forget. Jim the same. I tell him. What happened that you have to make me to leave the comfort of my house to come here this early morning? Your assurance was that the law is under you. Yes. And you assured us that everybody is protected. Wait a minute, Alison. They quizzed you too? 
Oh, so you know already? For Christ's sake, why are these people going around questioning everybody? I don't know why. I have already lost my job because of the assistance I gave you. Eh? I've already lost my job. You promised everything that everywhere is protected. Why you protected nothing? Why nothing is done? Now I'm here trying to pick the broken pieces of my life. And if you don't, if you don't want this miserable conspiracy off my back, I'll come after your head like a wounded lion. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, are you also saying that you are going to kill me? I don't know. I don't know who else is, is after her head or who wants you dead. But you got me right. If you cannot ward them off, then and then I will venture the unimagined. I will. Alison, you kill me. It's a promise. You leave me with the impression that you are hiding something from me. I am not hiding anything from you, sir. I don't know how they managed to trace me to my new address and they asked me many questions. For goodness sake, this is what you have been saying. I want to know the specific question they asked you. Ah. Tell me! Uh, what's the meaning of this, gentlemen? Your name is Dr. Joe. Of course. We know that much. We are police detectives. This is Inspector Ferdinand. I am Inspector Gill. So what can I do for you? Dr. Joe, there is no need to fret. We just want to ask you simple questions. You can go for now. OK, sir. I have seats, gentlemen. Don't worry, we are OK standing. We are very OK. Dr. Joe, are you a medical doctor, or you are just a doctorate degree holder? What sort of question is that? Eh? Anyway, I'm a medical doctor. Fantastic. Now, during your courses, did you pass all your examinations during your course? It sounds more funny that, than it is stupid. For goodness sake, I passed my courses. All my courses, I passed them. Common sense should tell you that I cannot be a medical doctor without passing all the relevant examinations. Common sense should also tell you that in your line of profession, ethics will not allow you to make false reports. Am I correct, Dr. Joe? I don't understand what you mean by writing false report. That is about fine, Dr. Joe. For me to show you this document, Take a look, because we have reason to believe that you are the very fraudulent authority who signed that false report. Of course, I signed the report. But I don't know what you mean by false report. The information contained in this report is false and fraudulent. Look, my friend, you can't say that because you are not a medical expert. We have gone to question Madame Magdalene, and she confirmed to us that she was never ever in coma in your hospital. But your report say that she was in coma under your care. So what do you call it? Authentic report? I don't know what you are talking about. And besides, she can't say she wasn't in coma. She can't. Dr. Joe, in her state of coma, as reported by you, Madam Magdalene was able to fire her lawyer and then hired another lawyer who acquired for her letters of administration. Something that you cannot get within 10 days, but she got it. Now she took charge of her husband's estate. Are you aware? Of course, that's not my area. So I know nothing about that. No, no, Dr. Cho, you should know. You should know because everything happened under the state of your personal induced coma here in your hospital. You should know everything concerning what she did. Now open up your mouth and speak. Tell us what you know we want to hear. In that case, I'm not going to answer any other question until I get across to my lawyer. Dr. Joe. What are you doing? It was reported 
that it was you that personally rushed Madame Magdalene and company to this hospital. Am I correct? That's not correct. I was here when they were brought in by two men. Fantastic. We knew that wasn't correct. Who are the men? Open your mouth and answer the question, Dr. Joe, because you need no lawyer to tell us the men that brought them in. Who we are they? Okay, okay. They were brought in by one Mr. Okeke, whom I was told is the chairman of Mechanic Union. It is reported that one of your doctors, after examination, realized that the driver was in no form of danger. He wasn't wounded and had wanted to discharge him. Is that true? Correct. On professional consideration. And, but you refused, Dr. Joe. The doctor wanted to discharge this driver, but you refused. Because you and Mother Magdalene had a plan. And that was to kill the driver during the night. And that's what you did. You killed the driver during the night. Is that correct, Dr. Joe? You are not correct at all. In fact, I can't think of a better fabrication than that. <laughs> Died in the night? Nobody killed him? For goodness sake, why should I kill him when I don't even know him? I think the time has come for you to call that lawyer of yours because you are in some deep, deep shit. I put it to you, Thomas. You are not doing anything at all. You have the duty to control the cops. And that is exactly what I'm doing. Look, the area commander who is directly in charge of those officers is away on course uh, at, at the police college. He was some, he was, he's just rounding off now. When he gets back, everything will be okay. I can't believe this. I can't believe you're saying this. The police are busy questioning everybody. And you're here telling me that we have to wait for one fool that went for police college exam. Oh. I want to understand what you mean by questioning everybody. Good. They question the lawyer, the mechanics, and now the probate officer. You always tell me that you are controlling these officers. Meanwhile, they are digging deeper and deeper. You're one useless man that is parading yourself as the mayor of the city and the chief security officer. Hey, That's all. Hey, hey, hey. How dare you? I am a senior government officer. You better watch what you say. Okay. If you think you are not useless, you better wake up. You cannot convince me that you're not useless when you cannot even control the boys that are under you. The problem I'm having with you is that you think they are my boys. <laughs> Who told you that confirmed police officers are boys? No, they are men. Men who have been through their courses and have passed then have been promoted to become officers of the law. I cannot believe it, Thomas. Is that a way you are telling me that collecting money from me all this while is just for nothing? Sit down. I said sit down. Sit down. You and I have come a long way. You should stop making statements that you regret later. I am handling the officers with care. You have to trust me. Trust me. My friend, are you aware that I'm currently the officer in charge of the station? I know you're the station officer, but I don't know why you're angry with me, sir. You don't know why I'm angry with you. I'll tell you why I'm angry with you. I am angry with you because you are a disobedient officer. You keep flaunting my orders. If you don't take time, I'm going to make a report against you to the authorities. Sir, why would you want to do that? Ferdinand and Mr. Gay are both police inspectors like you. Why are you asking me to make them look stupid, sir? It's just not fair. Wow, so you are now the one to teach me this job, right? If you don't take time, I will destroy you in this station. And that is a promise. never succumb to empty intimidation. Those two officers are better officers than you. I will
will never, never call their names. It's actually part of my civic responsibilities to answer questions from the police whenever they come asking. So what do you want from me? Madam, there's an investigation going on, and even though we know who you are, for the sake of this interview, can you tell us if you are the headmistress of Compact Nursery and Primary School? Exactly. I am the headmistress of the school. How long have you been the headmistress? Uh, since the inception of the school, I've been the headmistress. Okay. With that, I can conclude, or we can conclude, that you were the headmistress as at Saturday, 29th January 2008. Am I correct? On that very date, your school organized graduation ceremony for nursery pupils. And one chief at one donated one million naira to your school. Is that correct, Madam Felicia? There was nothing like that in my school. There was nothing like that. Now, ma'am, is there a possibility that we could go through the records to be sure of what you're saying? Officers, I just can't be sure. It's my school and I know my school. There was nothing like graduation at that said date you mentioned now. Moreover, my school stopped graduation for the nursery people's section over six years ago. So there could not be any graduation at that said year you mentioned. Maybe I will say thank you for the information. You're welcome. For record purposes, please. There was nothing like such donation in my school from anybody at all. No donation? No donation at all. No graduation? At all. There was nothing like that in my school that year. Well, I invited you here because I now no, that you are the best police officer I can rely on. You see, I have a task for you. And I know that you will deal with it with all the energy and resources at your command. Well, thank you very much, Chief, for the compliments. But I must say that I'm disappointed. It took you this long to realize I'm a better police officer than those two. I am sorry. But you must agree with me that the most important thing is the fact that I, the mayor of the city of Hope, I have given you a pass mark for your job as a police officer. Thank you, Chief. What is the task you have for me? It is a difficult one, but I have no doubt you will do it well. I want us to deal with Ferdinand and Gail. It depends on what you want me to do. Ferdinand, you know, has a degree in criminal law. And dealing with such one, I must admit, will require a whole lot of technicalities, Chief. That is why I said you are a very good cop. Why don't you um, organize, organize, arrange the, the, the technicalities, and then let us go ahead and deal with those buffoons. Hmm? Okay, okay. We know that you stole the wrecked car that killed Chief. Why did you steal the car? Officer, I don't know where you are getting your information from. I did not steal any car. We have information that you made away with the car. Where is the car and why did you make away with the car? Madam Madeline gave me the car as a gift and I accepted it. Is there anything wrong with that? Okay, okay. Can you tell us exactly what you did for Madame Magdalene that made her give you that car as a gift, as you said? I did not do anything for her. She only gave me the car as a gift from her heart and I accepted it. And I don't say anything bad in accepting a gift. I don't know why you're asking nonsense. Listening to you call yourself Okeke, okay, I know exactly where you came from. Okeke. Okay, okay. Now Okeke, okay, okay, tell me. Are you telling me to my face that you, okay, okay, will accept the gift of a car that actually killed the husband of a woman from that very woman as a gift? You, okay, okay? Officer, why are you complicating issues now? 
I said the woman gave me the car as a gift, a free gift, and I accepted it. Okay, I put it to you that you aided Madame Magdalene in killing her husband. That is why she gave you that car. I did not aid anybody to kill anybody. As you can see, I'm just a poor mechanic struggling to survive. You, you, you never struggle. Your struggle is about to begin. Are you not the very one that appeared from nowhere when the accident happened and you helped to take them to the hospital? I only helped them if I saw that they are in danger. I don't know what you mean by appearing from anywhere. What is wrong in helping somebody in danger? Okay, 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 I want to put it to you again. That you were driving in a different car. You were trailing them. And once the accident happened, you killed her husband. And when you realized the wounded driver saw you kill him, you went to the hospital and you killed the driver that night. And that is why Magdalene gave you the car. Because of your assistance. True or false? Officer, I still don't know what you are talking about. You see, even when you are making every effort to cover the truth, the truth is coming out because your face betrays you. All the lies you are saying, they are written on your face. Now, look, okay, listen to me. We can remove you from this case. We can expose your name completely and face the real criminal. But you have to open up to us. Tell us the truth that we need, which you know. Where is that car now as we speak? Where is the car? You. Okay, okay. We have bushed it. <laughs> Where did you bush the car? We bushed it where we used to bush our others. Can you mention four people that witnessed that event? I was thinking you were smart and intelligent. You disappointed me completely. How dare you open your mouth up to them? But they said you confessed to them that you were not in a coma. I mean, they have facts. Shut your mouth! Don't you know police investigators are cunning people? They just use an old police trick on you and you went singing like a bird. Madam, you've ruined me. You have ruined me. Now they know everything. Eh? They have the chronicle of all your activities. Even the hospital board may, may, may blacklist my hospital and that will be the end of my practice. You have ruined me, madam. Those officers, I am handling them. <laughs> and that case, if you will be told, will be buried forever. <laughs> Are you sure, madam? Are you sure? Look, one thing you don't even know is the volume of information at their disposal. Now, you go home and relax. A man inside a locked cage cannot do anything to me. Nothing. Nothing at all. Go home and relax. Why are you guys doing this to yourselves? You know you cannot afford to join issues with the mayor. I hate to see fellow senior officers wasting away in the cell like this. Why don't you guys just drop this case and have him release you? Ekubu, are you here on your own? Or were you sent by the mayor? Come on guys, give me some credit. The mayor cannot send me. Of course I'm here on my own and you know it. Then you ought to know that good officers don't mingle with enemies of the state. And who do you refer to as an enemy of the state? Myself or the mayor? Even as you stand there, Yakubu, asking that question, you know the answer yourself. You know the enemies of the state. But I tell you one thing. We are not going to drop this case. Because we have stumbled on the evidence we need. Very soon, many of the fools who are parading themselves about as government officers will find their way into detention facilities. Many of these animals who rig themselves into offices 
and they are holding everybody down. They are destroying the land. I know they sent you. I don't have time for them. Just go and tell them that we are determined to continue with this case. There is no going back. You see, guys, you are the ones behind bar. An officer behind bar cannot put anybody in a cell. You know that. I don't even know why I'm even talking to you. You are a compromised officer. So I don't even know why you are still calling yourself an officer when you have been compromised. Just go back to those that sent you and tell them that we are here. We are going to be very decisive, very resolute. Look, you know I'm just being a concerned colleague here. Why are you calling yourself a good colleague? You are a fool. A couple is a fool. Why are you even talking to this man? Let's go to those. Anthony, we have evidence now to prove that it was your stepmother, Madame Magdalene. She was the one that planned the death of your father. We can prove it now. But, uh, <clears throat> officer, why, why are you being detained? Are you telling me that you didn't listen to that fool that just left here? The one they call Inspector Yakubu, who has become an affiliate of the politician that is destroying the city. Is the fool? We are here by the orders of the mayor because the mayor wants to weaken our spirits. We have refused to be weakened. Look, there is something we found out. Don't be offended. Don't take it personal. The mayor, Mr. Thomas, is dating your stepmother, Mother Magdalene. But don't be offended. Don't take it but something we found out. Uh, we have evidence, you know? Uh, <clears throat> officer, you don't you don't have to be sorry about your suspicion. That woman is useless. She has so many boyfriends and one of them is actually my friend. I know her, she's a disgrace. You know, there are going to be pressures coming from different places, different quarters, different offices. They will want you to change your statement. You know, as we are now inside this place, they can easily move you to the counter and ask you to change your statement. Do not ever, ever accept to change your statement. Remain on what you wrote already. Even if they ask you to write again, write exactly what you wrote before. Before they brought us here, we were closing in on a lot of people who were involved in this dastardly act. Do not ever change your statement. All right, officer. But now that you guys are here, you know, you're being detained. How will you continue? Very simple. We are police officers, confirmed police inspectors. They know that we know what they know. They cannot keep us here more than 24 hours. They must release us. And when we go out, we shall continue from where we stopped. There are many people involved in this case. And the law must cash up on all of them. All of them. The mayor, the mayor of the city of hope. City of nonsense hope. Things are falling, so far apart. My life is turned down. This injustice is tearing my Okay. Are you missing your way or what? Okay, then I can't miss my way to come to you. Mm -hmm. I've just come to see you. To see me? True. You mean after killing my friend who was helping him pay my son's school fees, you have the audacity to come to my house and say you want to see me? Okay, then why are you so hard on me? How could you say I killed my beloved husband? You and I know I can't do such a thing. Um, please, can we go inside? Uh? This place. You cannot enter this place. You cannot enter this place. If there is anything you want to discuss, discuss it here and now. You can't enter my house. Uh. Tell me that you still bear 
animosity against me. Anima, I don't even know what you mean by animosity. For all I know, you cannot enter this place and discuss with me. It's not possible. So the best thing for you to do is go back to wherever you are coming from. Ogandanel, oh, I can never discuss anything outside here. I can never, never at all. You must know that certain matters must not be treated with levity. <laughs> levity. What do you mean by I don't know what you mean by levity. I have told you and I want to repeat it that you are not entering here. You can start to This is a matter of life and don't even don't even try to touch me again. Let me tell you, don't try to touch me again. If there are those people that sent you, go and tell them that you didn't see me. The evil that men are or women do lives with them. Do you understand? So there is nothing I have with you. Go and tell those people who sent you that you did not see me. Okay, tell you why, why? Why do you know all these things? Please let me talk to you. Me? I beg you, sir. Please. Come and leave me, brother. Mother, no, please, it's a matter of life and death. Please, sir, please. want me to be honest with you? You're not making sense to me. Honestly, Chief, I think you should release those two inspectors from detention. I had a long talk with them yesterday, and I can tell of a truth that they're making some lethal plans. What do you mean, lethal plans? These ordinary officers who refuse to obey the order of the mayor of the city of Hope. They will rot in that cell. I promise you. They will. I'm sorry, Chief, but you cannot afford to let those two rot in detention. Inspector Ferdinand, I know very well. Yesterday he was raising some very technical issues. And I know he's very good with the law of evidence. As it is right now, they already tagged us enemies of the state. And sir, I cannot afford to be dismissed from the force. There's only one reason for releasing you. And that reason is best known to me. But what I will say to you is this, never flout my orders, otherwise you will compel me to take your names to the police disciplinary panel. And you know that um, you will be disciplined and as uh, the chief security officer of the city of Hope, I can influence the panel to dismiss you. Can I ask you one question, sir? You want to ask me a question? Yes, sir. Okay, well, what, what, what is it? Are you dating Madame Magdalene? What? Is it me? You are asking such a stupid question. I'm very sorry, sir, but we have reasons to believe that you have something to hide. As a senior governmental official as you are, we don't understand why you are shielding a woman that killed her own husband. Now you shut up and get out before I change my mind and send you back into the cell. We are sorry, sir, but we are telling you the truth. We have enough evidence to prove that the lady killed her husband. We can prove it, sir. You do not leave right now. You will both regret your lives. Speaking on your own or your sense by others? Madam, I do not know those you refer to as others, but I will have you know that I'm here on my own. Do you know what it means to have a son who is out to kill you? He wants me dead. I will never release him. That young man in our custody is not there because he ordered so. He is there on the orders of the mayor. And I can assure you that very soon he will be forced to release him. What are you talking about? Who we'll force him to do that? You see, Ferdinand and Gil are not friendly officers like myself. They are closing in on this matter very soon, big time. Do you know you're talking about two idiots that call themselves police officers that we brought in in sale? Now tell me, what can they do from sale? 
For your information, they have been released. What? Who released them? And where are they? You should realize by now that those two are police inspectors and cannot be kept in a cell for more than 24 hours over a nonsense, trivial matter like this. The mayor knows his limitations and he has released them. You see, no matter how long it takes for the truth to come out, the truth always comes out. Now, I want to urge you in this case, do not lie to us. To an extent, we know what is happening. Tell us the truth. I've told you the truth. I'm not lying to you. I have said the truth, at least the truth that I know. Okay. According to your words, you butchered the car. I'm not too sure what that means, but I know you're lying. Where is the wrecked car? As you can see, and I've said before, I am only a poor mechanic laboring every day under the sun. I don't know what else you want from me. Okay, okay. Do you still remember what I told you the last time we came here? I told you that your struggle was about to start. Today now you are telling me that you are a poor mechanic, laboring under the sun. Listen to me, okay, okay. As you are standing here now, you are on the verge of going to jail. But you can help yourself by telling us the truth. Because this case has already surrounded your neck completely. But we can remove you from the case. You are going to be a credible witness for us so that we can leave you alone and face the principal suspect. Tell us the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Where is that car now as we speak? That wrecked car. Where is the car as we speak now? I did not push out the car. I took the car to the forest, down, down, down inside the forest and I burned the car as was instructed. I left the remains of the car there. Okay, okay. Can you tell us the name of this person who instructed you to take the car to the forest? Set the car ablaze there in the forest and leave the remains there. Who gave you that instruction? Madame Madeline gave me the instruction that I should go and burn the car. And uh, let me put this clearly to you. I did not kill Chief Atwan and the wounded man. She killed her husband and the wounded man herself. Okay, okay. Can you put this down in writing? Because that is the only way you can help us help you. If you promise not to put me in jail, I will. I can even write it today. Like you rightly said, I was at the scene of the accident. But I was not the one that killed Chief and the wounded man. Madame Madeline did that herself. <coughs> you see, um, I sent for both of you. Because that woman came here some days back and said she wanted us to talk. That evil woman. What did she say? Uh, she said she wanted us to go inside and talk and I didn't want to allow her into my house. So she left. Uh, Mr. Daniel, I think that was a very bad move. Because you should have allowed her in the house and have a conversation with her. Every information is vital to this investigation. <laughs> a man that is surrounded by enemies will guard himself all the time. See, there is no amount of money you will give me to make me sit down with that evil woman and discuss. No, she is evil. Can't you understand? She is evil. <laughs> now, Mr. Daniel, do you have a rough idea of the very topic she wanted to discuss with you? 
How can I have an idea of what she has in mind? I don't have any idea. I say I never allowed her to come closer to me. She left. There's no way I can have uh, knowledge of what she had in mind. She just left. Yes. Barista Afion, I don't know why you say that she should relax. That the useless officers won't be able to do anything. Now tell me, what makes you think they won't be able to do anything? They can do anything first because they don't have evidence. In law, what we require is evidence. The officers are just speculating. And that is not tenable in law. I am not wholly comfortable with what you are telling me. I was made to understand that we're dealing with smart and intelligent officers. I don't know what you mean by speculations. Mind you, they are questioning the right people. Yes. Yes, come in, the door is open. Good day, madam. I am Inspector Ferdinand, and that's my colleague, Inspector Gill. I'm sure you've heard about us. What are you doing in my house? For goodness sake, today is public holiday. We are just doing our job. We want to ask you a few questions. You came to my house to question me on a public holiday. Is that professional? Madam Magdalene, there is no need to fret. It's even ideal that your lawyer is here so you can witness what is happening now. You know about the investigation going on concerning the accident you had. We just want to clarify a few things. On your return from Enugu, on that very day, when you had the accident, you were coming from a graduation ceremony of Compact Nursery and Primary School. Was that the day you had the accident? Was that the day your husband died? That's very correct. The date? Specifically, it was the 29th day of January 2008. Is that correct, Madam Magdalene? That same is very correct. Now, how would you react if I tell you that there was nothing like graduation in that school on the date you just accepted? You cannot be serious. How could you say anything like that? Because graduation of that school was long abolished. Long, long before you took your husband there for that very graduation ceremony. Madam. I don't know who is telling you all this rubbish. Madam, you don't call it rubbish. Because it was your very specific instruction to Mr. Keke the mechanic that he should set the car ablaze and dump Sam in the bush. Is that correct, Madam Magdalene? Well, gentlemen officers, I think you are embarrassing my client and I want that to stop. Mr. F. Young, it would interest you, and especially you, madam, that that vehicle has been recovered and presently is in our forensic department undergoing test. I don't know what you are talking about. I did not give anybody any instruction. Or are you going to tell me or did you see me giving any mechanic any instruction? Madam, well, we don't need to see you give the instruction before we know you gave that instruction. Now, I'll tell you something. Go to all the liars of all ages and verify and they will tell you that liars need lies to cover lies and they need to keep inventing new line of lies to suppress existing lies but i tell you something here and now a time must always come when the truth will force itself to come out have a good day out out <laughs> very big problem and we have to know how we're going to solve it. There is only one reason I am talking to you now and that is because of God in heaven. Thomas who now parades himself as the mayor of City of Hope is my brother like you already know. But among all the fools born by women, he is the biggest. I'm sorry, Mr. Benjamin, but I have to remind you immediately that you are making reference to a senior government officer. <laughs> you can't call him a fool, sir. Uh, he's my brother. 
and I can refer to him as anything. Even if he comes here now, I will still call him a fool to his face. I can't do anything. That bastard got married and invited me to come to where he was living at Akure. Do you know why he called me? He told me that he invited me so that he can officially tell me that as a married man, he was no longer responsible for any of our training. Training of any of us. That he was only going to train his wife. That we will, you know, try and uh, fend for ourselves. You mean he invited you to Akura just to tell you that? I'm not kidding. Our father was dead by then. And I was in the secondary school. Now, if he wasn't a fool, he would have known that a young man of my age then needed help and care. He gave me only 25 naira to transport myself back from Akure. I spent 40 naira transporting myself to Akure. That was callous. I must admit, that was very, very callous on his part. He's still alive. You can go and confirm from him. I had to humble myself and did me near job for three days under harsh Hamatan weather before I could save enough money to transport myself back to Ketu. So, so, so do you see him as an enemy? Let's forget about that event. It's all history. It's past. But he did one thing that I call good in his life. I call it good because if I were in his shoes, I would have done the same. So what did he do? Mm. You know what, Mercy? What? Should I tell you the truth? No. He's one experience I've known for years to have. <laughs> wow, why are you that excited? Are you excited because he got me so cheap? Messi, that's where you go wrong. See, let's forget about the specific of who got who. The most important thing is that you know how we started and how we ended up here. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> so, may I know why you're so excited? Oh. Did I give it to you the way no other woman has ever given it to you? Really want to know? Yes. <laughs> I'm excited because for the very first time in my life, I'm sleeping with a married woman on her matrimonial bed. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a wonderful achievement, you know. <laughs> no. Come on, Cleo. You're making me regret this. I mean, I'm get, feeling guilty. Come on, you don't, you don't have to regret anything. See, let me just tell you. The most important thing here is that what we both feel for each other we grow. Uh, can you read my lips? I love you. <laughs> the intruder right on his matrimonial bed with the wife and killed the bastard pushed him into pieces and flushed him down the toilet I'm sorry officers but that was the only reason I think I believe he's still my brother I'm sorry Mr. Benjamin what your brother did was murder. Why didn't you report to the police? I sincerely didn't see it as murder. Um, but in a society where serious murders are not resolved, do you think I waste my time with the suicide mission of a fool? Did you hear that? Well, Mr. Benjamin, I think you are even complicating things. It definitely wasn't suicide. Your brother committed murder and he shouldn't have taken the law into his hands. 
shouldn't have. I don't agree with you. No. Any man that must defile another man's wife should go to a hotel and pay for a room. But any man that goes into another man's wife right on her matrimonial bed deserves nothing but death. And clean up that fool was the very best thing that my brother Thomas ever did. I'm sorry, officers. Officer that's supposed to be in detention have recovered the car. And they equally knew there was no graduation. You call yourself a mayor. I'm sorry for the development. Those two officers considered them dead. I instructed them to discontinue the investigation, but they refused. <laughs> mm. Oh, I am going to get some hired killers to destroy them. Why do you want to hire assassins? Why don't you kill them yourself? <clears throat> there are things that happen in government that you would not understand because you've never worked in government. <clears throat> but I promise you that there, they will be wiped out. Their entire generation would be wiped out. You take my word on that. I said, how dare you budge into this room? Explain yourselves. We have an order for your arrest. Sir. <laughs> you have an order for my arrest. Read the order, sir. <laughs> what? 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 What's all this nonsense about? Huh? What's all this nonsense about? We have an echo from your past. What the hell is he talking about? So we're back in Akure. You killed a young man. A young man you met sleeping with your wife. That young man came from a family where they have senior advocates. Suddenly, you are up against the law, sir. The law wants to know what became of that young man. You are under arrest for murder, sir. How? Oh. How did you find out? The evil that men do lives with them. You can suppress justice for some time, but not all the time. Sir, can we leave? Things are falling so far. Thank you. 
Live a useless life. You killed my father. I beg your pardon. Did I just hear what he said? Oh. <laughs> so you are the idiot that released this beast that I detained. Madam Magdalene, or whatever you call yourself, be very, very careful with how you open your gut. Very, very careful. And what can you do? Go ahead and enjoy yourself. Thank God. Amen. You are all arrested. Now it is so perfect that your number is complete. Your lot are all here. Arrest them, officers! <laughs> officer, uh, officer, I, I thought we have a number. Somebody shut up. tell me what is happening. Shut up! Who do you mean arrest them? I mean, you, you people have to be careful that you don't touch me. I'm a lawyer! 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 Truth is green in color. Some say it is evergreen. But no matter what you do, you cannot cover the truth forever. Things are falling so far. Against all of God. 